This is a very exciting time for us. Who is us? I'm Doe, for starters, and I have in front of me a number of students, or my classroom, or in old language, a couple thousand years ago, disciples, those who are trying to prepare themselves for entry into the evolutionary level above human, synonymous with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk to you about the most urgent thing that is on our mind and what we suspect is the most urgent thing on the minds of those who will connect with us. We'll title this tape, uh, Planet Earth About to be Recycled. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. Planet Earth about to be recycled. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. Now, that's pretty major statement, pretty bold in terms of religion, in terms of anybody's intelligent thinking to most people who would consider themselves intelligent beings that say, well, that's, that's absurd. What's all this doomsday stuff? What's all this prophetic stuff? You know, intelligent human beings should realize that everything has their cycle. They have their season. They have their beginning. They have their end. They have cycles. We're not saying that planet Earth is coming to an end. We're saying that planet Earth is about to be refurbished, spaded under, and have another chance to serve as a garden for another human civilization. Now, the reason this is such an interesting time is not only because we're on the threshold of the end of this civilization, because it's about to be recycled, but because of where that finds us, where that finds you, where that finds those who would judge us, how we would speak of them and how they would speak of us. Now you say, you keep saying us, who do you think you are? Well, I, in all honesty, must acknowledge my father. My father is not a human father. My father is a member of the evolutionary level above human, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. My father gave me, long before this civilization, gave me birth into that kingdom level above human, that kingdom of heaven, that kingdom of God. Now you can say, well, I can't believe that. Well, it's up to you whether you believe that or not. That's not important to me, even though I wish that you could believe it for your sake. For those who do believe it stand a possibility of a future beyond this recycling time. Now you say, well, according to religious literature, I thought there was someone else that was going to come and be our savior here at these end days that that was going to be Christ's return. Well, the name Christ might be a little confusing, or the name Jesus, because the name Jesus, of course, of course, was the name given to the body that that mind that was indeed from the kingdom of heaven came, and that mind was here 2,000 years ago, and that mind came for the express purpose of teaching humans how they could be saved, how they would not be plowed under at the end of the age. Well, we're at the end of the age. So the one or the mind that was in Jesus, what? That mind is in me? You'll have to decide that for yourself. I must admit that I am here again, that I'm here saying exactly the same thing that I said then trying to say it in today's language, trying to hope that for your sakes you can 
See what we have to offer you, for our Father offers you life. I'm not talking about human life. If planet is about to be recycled, and we see the planet as a stepping stone, planet Earth a stepping stone, that just as within a civilization, a civilization evolves upward, that each segment of civilization becomes more civilized, less barbaric in some ways. It's supposed to, not that it necessarily does. Sometimes it seems to appear to be more civilized when, in fact, it becomes more barbaric, more quick to condemn the rest of the world, more quick to be quick to kill the rest of the world that, that does not think as it thinks. Well, I know what I just said. I said that I am the return of the son of my father. I'll tell you something that's even more remarkable. My father came with me this time. Came in the early 70s, took on a human form, an adult human form, helped me get in an adult human form in the early 70s, and we together helped those who came with us that were also here 2,000 years ago get in the bodies that they were wearing so that they could rid themselves of human behavior, human activity, human thinking, so that they could be ready to move into the kingdom of heaven or the evolutionary level above human. These that are sitting before me have been students of T and O, T, my father, have been students of T and O, are still students of T and O, even though T returned to the heavens in 1985. And T is my heavenly father, gave me birth into that kingdom before this civilization began. Now, I'm not here to sell you on that, or who I am, or who these are. I'm here to offer you, as these are, an opportunity to know the truth so that if you can connect with it at any level, then you might survive the respading or the recycling that is about to occur. We made a tape just shortly ago, and in that tape we said that there are three types of individuals that will survive the recycling. One type of individual is those individuals that have overcome their humanness enough that when the end of this age is complete, when the war is over, the spading complete, there is nothing left here except for recycling. When the end of that occurs, then they have reached a condition of having overcome human behavior, human thinking, human desires, desiring only to be in the kingdom of heaven, in the evolutionary level above human, being service in that kingdom. When they have done that to the degree that they are a match for a physical body belonging to that kingdom. Because humans think that this is a flesh body world, and it is, it's a flesh body world, but it's more importantly a human flesh body world. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the evolutionary level above human is also, they have bodies. I wouldn't say flesh bodies because it's different characteristics, but it's a physical body and it's equivalent for that evolutionary level to a human body. It doesn't need the kind of fuel that humans would need. It's not a mammalian body. It doesn't reproduce. It's not male nor female. It probably would look like what you might consider a very attractive extraterrestrial. Now, most of the illustrations of extraterrestrials these days have been grotesque looked like giant in insects or slimy reptilians or 
eyes so big that you could fall into them, and an extraterrestrial that we say is a genuine extraterrestrial is not a fallen angel, is not a space alien. We see fallen angels and space aliens as synonymous. Fallen angels and space aliens as synonymous. And that the next level, the only real extraterrestrials, have a body similar to human body. Human body was taken after the same design, the same form, except a human body was more animal than that form. Human has hair, needs teeth, has uh, physical characteristics that are appropriate to this environment. When you go into, env in, into an environment that does not need to eat things that you have to pull off the bone or crack the seeds off the nut, then certainly teeth are not needed. Uh, hair is not needed. You, a creature that looks very attractive but has two eyes, some remnant of a nose, some remnant of ears, what you would call remnant, even though they function very well as nose, as ears, have a voice box but don't really need to use it because they communicate in thought. They communicate with their minds. And that's an extraterrestrial. That is the body belonging to a member of the evolutionary level above human, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. That can seem unattractive to you if you're really into flesh bodies. You know, there are sayings that there's seed of flesh or there, there are things that are born of flesh, and then there are things that are born of spirit, or born of water, is synonymous with being born of flesh. If people really understood the religious literature and could read it as it was intended to be read, they would know that it was written to describe that flesh, seed of flesh, was seed of the negative, the opposition, the space aliens, the fallen angels. Therefore, to the next level, human flesh is of the lower forces, of the kingdom level beneath the kingdom of God, of the stepping stone that could lead to the kingdom of heaven. So flesh, or human flesh, now, that isn't to put you down and to say you're all, if you're wearing a human vehicle. I'm wearing a human vehicle because I have to wear one for this task. I don't like it. It doesn't match me. And those who sit in front of me, they don't like their human vehicles that they have to wear for this task, but they have to wear them because the task of overcoming the human kingdom requires that they overcome flesh, the genetic vibrations the lust of the flesh, the desire to reproduce, the desire to cling to offspring or spouse or parents or house or money or fame or job or, or that could go on and on. Overcoming the human flesh and its desires even its religious desires. There is not a religion on the face of the globe that is of God as it is today. All of those things that are called religions are ruined records of man's relationship with someone from the evolutionary level above human or the kingdom of God. In other words, there it's like the religious literature is written as a time manual so that ancient religious literature was appropriate to that phase of civilization, less ancient literature was appropriate to that particular age. Then when someone came as a messiah, then that was appropriate to that time. What did the Lord that was here long before the messiah came, the Lord said, I will send 
a Messiah, n knowing that you will reach a condition, humans will reach a condition where they can move up into my kingdom and I will send my son as that savior to help you know how to get out of the human kingdom. Well, that savior came, that Messiah came, and he said, you know, I'll come again. And his father sent him again. And yet to say that is to be so blasphemous. In other words, what I say to you now is direct, present, current transmission information from the kingdom level above human, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and of my Father. Christians say they're Christians, and yet Christians don't quote what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you want to know my Father, if you want to move in my Father's kingdom, then shed everything of this world, leave everything behind, and come and follow me. And unless you hate everything of this world, your sister, your, your mother, your brother, everything of this world, you will not know the kingdom of heaven. You have to graft to me. You have to cling to me. I will take you to my father's house. And yet Christians world over quote Paul, who never sat with that representative, who was never a student of that representative, they say, oh, I love Jesus. He's in my heart. I'm filled with Jesus. Jesus wants me to live an abundant human life. He wants me to have riches. He wants me to have more children so that I can bring them up in the Christian family values. I don't remember Jesus ever saying that what I want you to do is go get married, have families, have children, and together bring all of them and I will take them into the kingdom of heaven. He only spoke to individuals that said the only way out of here is for you to know that as an individual that environment is not for you. That tie that binds you to the human kingdom is not for you. If you know it is not for you, then come to me and my Father will feed me information that can nourish you and help you overcome this world and will leave this world and will go to my Father's kingdom. Remember, we're not talking about a spiritual kingdom. No clouds, no harps, even though we are talking about in the heavens. But the heavens are no more spiritual than when you go out at night and look at the heavenly bodies and see them, they are there. They are physical. They even move in spacecrafts. Even my father's kingdom moves in spacecrafts. You could say, oh my goodness, that's, that's outrageous. Well, you don't like the illustrations of chariot of fire. You don't like the illustrations that are in your religious literature that tells of spacecrafts, of my father's kingdom, cloud of light. They didn't know what else to call it. Even when they saw angels that they said had wings, how else can they say they might have might as well said they fly. That didn't necessarily mean they had feathers on their back. It could mean that they came in a flying object and they came out of that flying object and that Jesus, when they saw him ascend, he went up into that cloud of light. Now, I'm not trying to make a deal out of a piece of transportation, but a craft belonging to the level above human is much more than a piece of transportation. It is a workstation. It is a place of service to the level above human. These that are leaving this kingdom level to go with me to my father's kingdom, to my father's house, these will not go into houses on some planet like Earth and reproduce and have families and sit and watch television and make scrambled eggs. 
they're going to be in service for whatever need the level above human, the kingdom of heaven, has for them. And the tools they use, the workstations that they use are spacecrafts, all sizes. Spacecrafts that are so small that a very small crew could fit in them because of the task that requires a small spacecraft. Spacecrafts that are so large you can't even see the outer extremities of them. They would look like something larger than a planet because the station requires that for whatever laboratory work or experimentation is going on, whatever their work is in that kingdom. How can they be effective servants in that kingdom if they're worried about their children or their dogs or their horses or their cats or how much time they have to put in at the rotary or different clubs or organizations? As individuals, they serve one individual and that is the, in, the representative of that level that is their chief that is over them for their assigned task. Just as in the task that we're in now with this classroom, these look to me for everything. I look to my older member to fill me in on what their needs are and how I might be used to supply, to supply their needs. I'm not just talking about their physical needs, but their mental needs, how they can make their change from human into the kingdom level above human. Now, this is not to say that we know that there is a guarantee that we will all together go on board a craft in order to leave before the spading under occurs. We will go definitely on board a craft to leave when the spading occurs. You can say, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is we don't know if we're going to take these flesh bodies on board that craft or if we'll leave these flesh bodies behind. We don't believe that our Father's kingdom has much need for these flesh bodies, but it's possible that a spacecraft will come down and we'll walk on board that craft and they'll take these bodies from us and issue us the ones that belong to that level so that we might begin service. Or it is also possible that part of our test of faith is our hating this world, even our flesh body, enough to be willing to leave it without any proof other than what we have come to know, that we have nothing to fear, that we are in good keeping, that we can leave the body that we're in, whether it's by martyrdom, because someone went crazy over our righteous blasphemy, or whatever might happen to the body that we wear and that we might lose it. We do know one thing, we don't care to cling to the life of this body until it naturally gives up. We don't care to be aborted by the body that we're wearing, we care more to abort it in proof to our Heavenly Father that we're ready to leave this place. We're ready to go into your kingdom. And they, these students, have to say to my Father, we trust your Son. We trust the one you sent. Even so much that we have no hesitation to leave this place, to leave the body that we have. We know that whatever happens to us after we leave this body is a step forward from what we have and that we don't care to be here. Earlier in this tape, I spoke to you of three types of individuals that can be salvaged from this respading. One was, I mentioned, those that have overcome enough that they will get an issue of a physical body belonging to the next level and go into service as a crew member working for the next level. A second type of individual that can be salvaged from this planet at this time are those who don't quite reach that point of overcoming when it is time to leave, but are still faithful to the best of their ability in their effort of breaking away 
and leaving their humanity and tr looking to us, looking to me, looking to my Father, looking to the next level to give them the strength and the understanding of how they can break away more quickly. So wherever they are, to the best of their capability at the time of our exit, whether it is not ready for issue of a next level body, they may have to experience a time in a civilization that is yet to come and do more overcoming of human kingdom, but they will be in the keeping of the kingdom level above human, just as these have been in the keeping of the kingdom level above human, not only here at this time in this generation with me and with T. That T isn't T's name, by the way. Doe isn't Doe's name. I'm not even given to under to tell you what my name is or T's name. T doesn't want you to know it. Okay. I had to put that in there, but just so that you would understand. Okay, the second type of individual that can go into the kingdom of heaven is that one at the time that we leave has not completed that and therefore the next level brings them back when a civilization is at the point where they can move in and pick up where they left off and do more overcoming so that they will reach issue time by the end of the next civilization that they have overcoming to do in. The third type of soul or individual that can go to the kingdom of heaven now with us and be in the keeping of that kingdom are those who even hear our voice right at the end or even receive this information and don't know where it's coming from. In other words, some might hear our voice and might know that where it is coming from, might know that I exist in physical form here about to leave. Others might not know that I do, but they something tells them I've got to break away. I can't stand to stay here. I've got to go to that kingdom level. So that's three types that can go, that can be saved, that will not need to experience recycling. Even that faith that would have them willing to leave, desiring to leave, trusting in that information. Those who actually know me have more serious time of test than those who believe this information and don't know me. The lower forces, once you see me in this vehicle, the forces of Lucifer, of Satan, the lower forces of this planet, that run this planet, by the way, those forces would do anything they can to keep these from succeeding with their task, to keep number two example of those that can go from succeeding in their task, and would do anything to keep even an initial believer from believing. Their whole effort, the lower forces' whole effort, is to have us not succeed in leaving and being in the keeping of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So, here we are. We're coming public with this information that we're about to leave. And this is like putting ourselves right out on the playing field so that the lower forces have a chance to try to do to us what they can do to us. It also will have challenge all those who are religious minded to look at us and say, hmm, is that the truth or is that not the truth? Is that Antichrist or the spurious Messiah? Spurious Messiah is the term that some prominent television satellite uh, ministries use in describing the Antichrist. Now, the Antichrist the, according to what they say, is coming before Christ comes. So, uh, that's, since he's not really on the scene, they say, then that means that Christ's second return has not really occurred. Well, I hate to tell you, but the Antichrist, the spurious Messiah, 
has been on the scene ever since my father and I left 2,000 years ago. And they have worked as hard as they could work through religions, through governments, through morality, through uh, responsibility as human to brainwash humans to expect heaven on earth, not to look to go to the kingdom of heaven, but to look for a heaven on earth, to work toward the future, to be preoccupied with replicating or reproducing children and laying aside enough money to take care of those children so that they will have a future and they will have a future and they will have a future in what? The human kingdom. To the next level, the human kingdom is nothing but a stepping stone. Anyone who wants to stay in the human kingdom and make it some sort of divinity is looking to some spurious messiah, some antichrist. And I know that those that are waiting for the spurious messiah, the antichrist, if they become aware of this tape and of Doe sitting here saying what I'm saying now, they'll say, that's the one. Because I warned you that the spurious messiah would say, I'll take you out of here. I'll rapture you into my Father's kingdom. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you can believe my Father's information, if you can believe the truth that we share with you, and if you believe it enough that you can put your trust in me, and that's a big dose. That's a difficult task to trust me. You do not know me well enough to trust me. I understand that. These know me. You don't know me. We have a website now. You know, it's the popular thing. Everybody has to have a website. We have a website on the Internet called Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate, of course, dot com. Everything is dot com. We're not dot org. We're dot com. So if you want to learn more about who we are, what we have to say, what I have to say, what my older member can share with you through what we have said and know of our history, we have nothing to hide. Even though to you we are a dangerous cult, we understand that. Why dangerous? Because we threaten the family. We threaten the established norm of family values. If you knew Jesus 2,000 years ago, you would know that exactly the same thing occurred and that the reason for getting rid of him was because if people really began to follow him to any significant degree, it's a political danger. It's against what the mainstream was teaching, what the norm was in the governments or the family, and certainly against the religion of that time. Religion today is an interesting thing because remember how we said a moment ago that the religious literature like the Bible, the Koran, the Torah, the, these are time manuals. These are in the time that something was written as the Lord or as God related to man, it was appropriate for them at that time. And yet we have the bulk, if not the vast majority of humans on the planet today who are very religious living exactly as they were trying to live some 5,000 years ago, some 4,000 years ago. They never made it to 2,000. 2,000 years ago was a chance to get out of here if you had listened to what the level, next level's representative had to say to you. But 2,000 years ago, that's a chance to get out of here, requires everything of you that you as an individual go join some cult, that you leave everything behind, that you ignore the members of your family, that you ignore the responsibility to your community, that you ignore your career, and that hearts will be broken. 
I don't mean to make light of that, that hearts will be broken. I know that hearts are broken. I also know that any one that leaves to go to my Father's kingdom, that any heart that is broken in the process of that transition can easily be more than healed if that heart looks to my Father for healing, looks to my Father for understanding, does not need to see this as a terrible experience. Many times the worst things in the human kingdom that can happen to us end up being the best things that can happen to us because we learn in-depth lessons because, because of those difficult times. Every life that was touched by these that are sitting in front of me, every life that was hurt or experienced pain by their leaving and becoming students of mine and of my father's, was hurt, severely hurt. Some of them still hurt. They hurt because they choose to still hurt. They could actually say, thank you, God, for the lesson that is mine to learn in this experience. And as far as that individual that I used to call my son or daughter or my husband or wife, I put them in your trust. I cannot tell them what they must do with their life. That is their decision. I cannot tell them what to do with their life. We cannot judge each other. I cannot judge you. I don't care to judge you. You will judge yourselves by what you do with what we have to say, by what you can accept and what you can't. It's almost better that you never see me or hear what we say, for that will put you to the test of whether or not you will condemn me, whether or not you will judge me. You cannot hurt me. You cannot hurt these. We do not judge you. It's funny that the world, the mainstream human world, is so quick to condemn and judge as if they were God Almighty, those who judge them I speak of. Judge them as if they were God Almighty because they know that what they have done, if they've joined some cult, is the worst thing that they could possibly, be, possibly do and they're being led down some wrong track into some spurious messiah camp and they're going to the devil. What is the devil like? Know your literature. What do the fallen angels feed on? What do they like? They like things of the flesh, of the human flesh, things of this world. What is told to you in all religious literature that you will find if you ever reach the kingdom of heaven? No males, no females, no children no families other than your relationship with God, your Lord. Your Lord is whichever member of his kingdom he has given to you, assigned to you as your helper, your instructor, your teacher. This is so simple that it sounds unreal. It's like it would be easier to accept if it were more spiritual, if it were more complicated, if it had more ritual with it, or more trappings of religion. In my father's house, no incense is required, no flowing robes, no tingling bells, no genuflecting, no sitting in lotus position, no things of spirituality, even though it requires cleansing of the spirit. The spirit is the mind. It requires ridding ourselves of the mind of the human kingdom, ridding ourselves of the lusts of the human kingdom, of the binds of the human kingdom being filled with spirit is an interesting thing for you to think about. What happened when the illustration was made that Jesus was with John the Baptist, 
and was being baptized and dove descended and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit meant that Jesus' mind entered the body he was wearing to the degree that his human mind was no longer affecting him. He had aborted that human kingdom. He was filled with the mind of his Father. The mind of his Father is Holy Spirit. Any mind of the level above human is pure Spirit, is Holy Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is something that comes and knocks you down, makes you fall on the floor because somebody's trying to heal your broken knee. Is not. It's an abomination. It's anything but being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, a soul is an interesting thing because my Father's kingdom plants souls and souls become the great separator as they are planted. My Father's kingdom plants souls in many humans each time a representative of the kingdom level above human is to be incarnate on planet earth plants many souls in human plants now they're really even though they're planted in the flesh because the flesh is what have to be has to be overcome they're really planted in the spirit the spirit being the mind or the intelligence of that flesh and then that soul is planted and you can say well does that mean that everybody doesn't have a soul that's what it means but it does mean that anybody can have a soul that can believe in my Father, the reality of my Father, the reality of his kingdom. In other words, those who are given the responsibility and the task of planting those souls, plant them in all of the plants that have a potential of taking that stepping stone and out of the human kingdom and into that kingdom because that soul is as the separator helps the individual in their mind and their spirit abort human thinking human evaluation human behavior and replace it with the mind that they get from the representatives the mind of the next level fill it up fill it up fill it up when it is so filled and enough aborting of human mind has occurred then that individual has come to viability, has come into bloom enough that that individual is ready to go to quartermaster when they leave this planet and be issued a body of service belonging to the kingdom of my father. Even if, now let me say this, all human plants even in their genetic structure, have a little bit of heavenly mind or mind of the kingdom of God, mind of the evolutionary level above human. I have to say all of those each time I say it, just to remind you I'm talking about the same thing. Each plant, each human plant has a little bit of that mind in it. So theoretically, and this is true, that if there was a human listening to me that in fact may not at this moment have a soul but that plant listened to me and said could that be true what that guy doe is saying i know it sounds crazy but i wonder if that's true even that degree of curiosity would attract the mind of a crew assigned being sure that that separator is made available to that individual so that that deposit of a soul could happen very, very quickly. They're not going to let it happen that any potential recipients of their kingdom not have the needed receptacle of spirit coming into full blossom as pure spirit, pure mind of the next level, what humans called Holy Spirit. I want to get back to the urgency. The urgency, you know, I don't know if you're aware that most literature of most religious scholars today say that the calendar 
that we use today or that humans use today is off by four years and that Jesus was born in four. Now, if Jesus was born in four and this is 96, then this is year 2000. This is the millennium. This is the beginning of the end. That's why we're talking. It is. For us to surface with what we're surfacing with, we know challenges you to want to squelch us. It's interesting that we see the world, we see the world as the anti-truth, the anti-Christ, the spurious Messiah. The world, those who want to stay in the world, will see us as anti-truth, anti-Christ, spurious Messiah. We're prepared for that. We know that that is inevitable at this time. That was inevitable 2,000 years ago. That's what got some guy strung on a cross. Remember we said that that third type of person that can actually be salvaged at the end can be taken into the keeping of the next level because they believe in what we say and that's as far as they got is to believe. What happened to that individual on the cross beside Jesus who believed and Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. He knew that he seriously believed. And that he knew that's all that it took is for him to believe who he was. Even believing him in a condition when he was being killed as a heretic against the church against the system. The church today certainly will see us as against the church. The church is not of God. The church was of God. The only church that there is today that is a live church is that which is connected with the present existence of the next level, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, a representative from that kingdom. And this is so exciting to us even though we know that it is close to our end and that is why it is exciting to us because we don't expect to or want to build a church on this planet. We don't want any Gothic cathedral. We don't want any membership role. We don't want to help you reproduce so that we have more children to put on the Sunday school role in the church. We are a group of believers in the kingdom level above human who want to leave and enter that kingdom and become of significant service. It does not mean that when in the human kingdom that a strong humanitarian drive is not a healthy thing because really a strong humanitarian drive is to improve. But if you could only see that a human condition is a temporary condition, a stepping stone, an opportunity to get out of this kingdom, then you could accept that. This is as scientific this is as true as true could be, but you have to know me. You have to trust me. You have to believe me. Some can know me now. Some can even know me for the first time when they see this tape and say, I don't know what there is, but there's something in my head that makes me know that fellow and makes me know that what he's saying is true. And I may be wrong, but I'm going to try to find more out and see if that's what I need to be a part of because I know that this place has become something 
that is not where I belong. It's funny that the, not funny, it's sad, that where a segment of my father's kingdom, where even in particular my, my personal heavenly father related to a community that is today considered the Jewish community and worked with them, preparing them for my presence here. And yet the Jewish community would certainly see me as anything but a representative of God. Even the Muslims who are considered the enemy of the Judeo-Christians, the Muslims have a more real connection with God, still better behavior, still more restraint. You know, one of my students reminded me just today that they came in contact with a Muslim who said, look, you know, you people of the West have a wrong idea of what we are, that we don't praise Muhammad. We don't worship Muhammad. We consider Muhammad a prophet of many prophets. Many of the books of our literature are of Jesus. And I say great is God more than 50 times a day because God means so much to me. God means so much to them that they are usually more quick to be more modest in the clothing that they wear, more quick to be on guard against sensuality, things of this world, where God means more to them and they are willing to die for God more quickly and justify that frame of mind than a willingness to die for nation or die for world. I'm not saying that Muslims are the ones that are going to inherit any more than anyone else. They're, in the eyes of the kingdom of heaven, there's no such thing as race or color or religious background. It doesn't matter. None of it matters if you came up with where you're, the extent of your religious background was Star Trek. That in itself could be the best background you could have if you could accept this as truth if you could accept this as reality. This is a test time. You know, here's a little old bitty classroom, some old fellow with prune face sitting here calling himself Doe, saying, I'm a representative of the kingdom of God. How can I believe that? If you have some of my father's mind in you, you will have some of that recognition. Even though once you recognize me, the forces of this world will dive in with all their might to have you lose that recognition, to have you not trust me, to have you come to your senses and come back into the service of this world. I hope this tape session with you will be the beginning of our relationship. If this tape session is used to validate your seeing us as the spurious Messiah, the anti-God, the antichrist, so be it. That's part of what we expect. That's part of the necessity of what comes at this time. It's the common thing for us to see each other as opposites of what we think we are. I'm so happy because that my time is short here. If you come with us, your time is short here. When Jesus left 2,000 years ago, or the one who was in Jesus, or when I left 2,000 years ago, only a very short time after that, truth was significantly corrupted so that no matter who tried to use that name of Jesus 
are of Christ, are that religion. The information, seeing it as true, seeing it as real, referring to what had been said by what it takes to come into my kingdom, that fell apart, that deteriorated, that became unimportant. It's a miracle that it's still in the Gospels. It's still there. You'd be amazed. It's still there. When I'm gone this time, when we're gone, when we leave, when we go and in, enter into my father's spacecraft in order to go into service in his kingdom, very short time, if you have not by then been recycled, those who are still here, if you are permitted because of my father's kingdom desire to have you stay a while longer, which I don't think is the case. If it were the case, the truth would deteriorate as fast as we depart. It would leave this atmosphere. I hope for your sake that you at least ponder this, that you go into the privacy of your closet. Don't ask your neighbors, your friends, what they think of this. You go see if you can connect with the purest, highest source that you might consider God and say, what about this? Is this for real? Is this for me? If it is, then give me the strength. Because as soon as you tell anyone else, they will be used as the instruments to have you not believe, to have you stay in this world and wait for heaven on earth. We hope to be of some service to you in this short time before our departure. And I say it's a very short time before our departure. So our thoughts, our thoughts will be of you. We hope that your thoughts will be of our Father's kingdom. Thank you.